<laughs> what do you do with a big box of Lego bricks? Personally, I build a giant tower. Which got me thinking about real skyscrapers. Could you make one out of Lego bricks? Stay tuned to find out. The first skyscraper was built in Chicago in 1885. It had a very glamorous name, the Home Insurance Building, and it was a whopping 10 stories high, which might not sound like much now, but back then it would have seemed unbelievably huge. Today, the highest skyscraper is just a little bit taller. It's the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which has more than 160 floors and is over half a mile high, 20 times taller than that first one over 130 years ago. Okay, let's have a look then. Okay, 3 and perfect. The Empire State Building in New York is probably one of the most famous skyscrapers, and not just because of King Kong and his tape measure. It was the first building to have more than 100 stories, and it was built incredibly fast, with builders completing almost a story a day. And a big hammer, okay. Here you go. I'll finish with this. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, how do such enormous buildings stay standing? Skyscrapers are amazing feats of engineering, and the designers have to think carefully about the forces that will affect the building. Forces are pushes and pulls that can make an object move or squash or stretch, and that's definitely not something we want our skyscrapers to be doing. There are two main forces that affect a really tall building. First up is gravity, or I should really say first down, because gravity pulls all things down towards the Earth. It's a vertical force, and it comes from the weight of the building itself. When you have a big pile of stuff, like all the stuff in a skyscraper, gravity is pulling down on all of it, creating a lot of weight. Imagine being jumped on by a bunch of your friends. That's what it's like for the bottom floors of a tall tower. They have to be strong enough to stay standing under the weight of the rest of the building. The second force may be a bit of a surprising one, but it's basically this. It's a horizontal force caused by air resistance. In other words, the wind. Although you can't see it, the wind is made up of tiny molecules, all travelling in roughly the same direction. When you stick a big skyscraper in the way, the molecules run straight into the walls and get slowed down or knocked off in another direction. Every time a molecule bumps into the building, it gives the tiniest of pushes. So when you have trillions of them doing it all at once, it can add up to a big push. In fact, for really tall buildings, the horizontal force from air resistance is more than the vertical force from the building's weight. So, to keep standing, a skyscraper needs to resist these two forces. And to do that, the choice of building material is super important, as these guys know all too well. <laughs> Hello, little piggies. <gasps> You can't run away. What's happening there then? Yeah, 
you've got to choose your material carefully. You couldn't, for example, build a skyscraper out of marshmallows because all the marshmallows at the bottom would just get squashed flat from the weight of the other marshmallows on top. Houses are made out of bricks and they do a pretty good job. But if you stacked a load of houses on top of each other, the bricks at the bottom would break and crumble. So instead, modern skyscrapers are built out of steel and concrete. We say these materials have much higher compressive strengths, which means that they can be compressed a lot. They can take a huge amount of squeezing before they break or change shape. They also have higher flexural strengths, which means that they won't flex or bend when the wind applies a horizontal force. But how is that steel and concrete put together to make the tallest, safest and coolest looking skyscrapers? Well, in a house, the weight of the upper floors and the roof is supported by the walls. This is fine for a house, but with a tall skyscraper, the weight of the walls themselves can become too much for even the strong steel and concrete at the bottom to bear. So engineers come up with clever ways of lightening the load. Rather than solid walls, they make a kind of skeleton that can take the weight of the building, but not be too heavy itself. One of these types of skeletons is a steel frame. Big steel beams are used to make boxes. The steel handles those vertical and horizontal forces and then lighter materials, like glass, can be hung on the outside. Hey Tony, how's your carrot? <laughs> oh, my wife says I gotta watch my cholesterol. <laughs> Steel frames are strong and they're lighter than using solid walls, but the points where the beams join can be a weak point. Plus the need for supporting beams in the middle of the building means that your rooms inside can't be very big. A more recent skeleton type is something called a tube. Instead of having supports that run through the center of the building, in a tube they're only on the outside and the steel beams are closer to each other and they run up the full height of the building so it acts like a hollow cylinder. Fix that cylinder firmly in the ground with strong foundations and it does an amazing job at staying in one place no matter what forces you throw at it. Whoa. What? Oh. What's going on? <laughs> Many super tall buildings are built with this tube design these days, which lets them have huge open rooms on the inside and loads of glass windows giving an incredible view of the city below. So could we build a skyscraper out of Lego bricks? Well, the compressive strength of a Lego brick is surprisingly high. Scientists have worked out that you could build a stack of bricks more than two miles high before the one on the bottom squashes. That's almost four times higher than the Burj Khalifa. So what's the world record for the tallest Lego tower then? Well, it isn't quite that tall. It's just 115 feet, but that took more than half a million bricks. So imagine how many you'd need for it to go for two miles. Well, let's find out, shall we? Time to finish my massive Lego tower of epicness. I think we're gonna need um, a few more bricks, please. For more awesome Lego videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.